thank you everybody for joining us and especially for Jessica in her car. Get home safely, please. Um, what I really want to do tonight, most importantly, is to start divvying up the design assignments to um, the six of you and um, and really get a clear, clearer anyway, understanding of what the first phase of the MOOC will look like. So that's the open online course that we'll be um, hosting in canvas.net. And so um, if you take a look, and hopefully everybody can see my screen except for Jessica, please don't look. I've put together a rough sketch of a design plan for us to use as kind of a home base um, for our team, for the, this design team, in terms of what the design assignments are going to be for the various weeks. And then just some of the nitty gritty as far as what the Canvas proposal is going to look for, like and things like that. So let's just jump right into it. Um, if, you, if you see this first page here, um, it's the table of contents. So if you just click on anyone, it'll take you to that section. So the, let, let's kind of dig right in and jump right in. Um, first of all, for those that have mics, and I think that's probably everybody, I think this would be a good time. It was kind of too big a group last week, but could we just take about five to 10 minutes and just, not hopefully not 10, let's say five minutes, and everybody just introduce yourself real quickly and talk a little bit about what you're currently doing as a designer and if you feel like you could talk a little bit about your academic and work experience. Because I think it'll, re it'll really be helpful um, as we try to make this next introduction to our group here and get us working together. So somebody want to take the first crack <laughs> and introduce yourself and say hi to the group? I can, I suppose. Okay, great, Josh, go ahead. All right. Um, so, Josh Heinrich, I'm actually in, uh, on the Kentucky side of Cincinnati. I work for the University of Cincinnati, and uh, I lead a small team of uh, uh, instructional designers <clears throat> that do uh, kind of the, we're in the central component, and we support a lot of the colleges and a lot of the units that, uh, instructional design units that work throughout the college. Uh, I was, I have about a, I spent the majority of my career in higher education, and um, I, uh, working as a designer in an educational technology capacity, um, I have um, uh, went to Ohio University, George Washington, and technically I'm still at UK, but I'm likely to transfer to uh, UC to finish up my PhD. Uh, <laughs> so it's wow. pretty I'm, I'm sure there's a big story behind that one. <laughs> Transferring for your PhD is like, kind of just gives me shivers down my spine. So. Well, I, I used to teach uh, instructional design and um, they kind of put the kibosh on my program. And uh, so I went to UC and I was getting remission and I was driving about an hour and a half to go to classes. So uh, oh my gosh. why it changed. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, good luck to you on, <laughs> on round two with the new, your new setup. That, that's great. And welcome to the project, Josh. Thanks. Okay. It's nice to meet y'all. I go can ahead, go. Stacey? Yeah, go it ahead. It's fine. I don't, I, I, I'm not going to show you my picture. My hair looks terrible. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my video either. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully there's no video camera. I'm, I'm going to be able to put my picture <laughs> like that, but... Um, anyway, my name is Stacy Swan. I live, um, I'm from outside of Philadelphia um, in a town called King of Prussia. Um, I w was originally a teacher. I taught um, K through 12 um, for about nine years, um, then moved into online teaching, um, then moved into higher ed and um, became an instructional designer when, um, during my um, online teaching experience and um, was in higher ed for three years, uh, creating courses for Immaculata University, um, which is here in the Malvern area, um, and worked as a support as well as um, along with the SMEs in designing their courses. Um, they were kind of responsible for a lot of the design. So taught courses on how to design and, you know, how to get them to be able to create a course, which is very difficult. I don't understand why the university really put that on a lot of the instructors because they, they were able to do face-to-face, -face, no problem. But when it comes to designing it online, it's a whole different ballgame. So, um, but I um, have my master's in educational technology. Uh, I got that from Rosemont um, College um, a while back, um, and then my bachelor's in uh, teaching. So 
Um, did I miss anything? Well, that's perfect. That's <laughs> great. That's great. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Jason. Sure. Feliz or JR, do you want to go ahead? Um, I can go ahead. My yeah, name please. Is, okay, my name is Feliz. Um, I'm originally from Turkey. I got a bachelor degree in science teaching. Then I got a master from Florida State University. I got another master from Ohio State. Now I'm getting my PhD in instructional design. I'm writing, I'm actually a PhD candidate right now. I'm writing my dissertation about for components of instructional design in a scenario-based um, learning environment. And um, I work for Florida Department of Health. I work for Department of Florida uh, Juvenile Justice close to three years. I have been teaching a system last four years. And now I'm really happy to and looking forward to working with you guys. Oh, that's great. We're really looking forward to, to working with you. And um, I think we have another student from FSU um, in, in, in a different group, I'm pretty sure. They're kind of blending together, but I'm pretty, pretty sure. So welcome. Thank you. I guess that means me next. That's you next. Um, yeah. I'm J.R. Dingwall. Uh, I'm the Canadian, I'm the token Canadian uh, <laughs> on this project, I guess. Um, I got my bachelor degree of education, um, with a major in industrial arts. So that's typically like all the shop classes, like woodworking, welding, etc. but also a minor in mathematics. And when I taught K to 12, I taught in a couple of alternate collegiates. So those are typically students at risk that need modified or, or adapted programs, uh, still in math, science, language arts. Uh, and then I moved on from there to, uh, do a master in educational technology. Um, and the program I went through was uh, offered by the University of Saskatchewan, where later I ended up working in medicine and then made the big move to Alberta. And uh, currently I'm working on another OER project for Olds College um, on workplace communication. So it's kind of all things OER in my realm right now. Wow, that's fantastic. That's great. Well, we may have a, a great assignment for you then when we get going. <laughs> that's terrific. Well, and, and as we mentioned last time, JNR had the opportunity, um, JNR, JR and I had the opportunity to meet last summer. So that's very unusual in this virtual world. It turns out most of the time you don't actually physically meet, meet people. So that was a neat opportunity. Um, and then Jessica, I don't know if you can talk. Jessica's in her car making her way home. So... Yeah, I think I can. Hopefully my camera's off. It says that it's off, but if it's on, it's a really unflattering angle. <laughs> I, it, I can't see you, so I think you're good. Great. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name's Jessica Rezig. I uh, was also a teacher uh, for my undergrad. I taught secondary English and social studies before getting my master's in instructional technology from Duquesne University. Uh, after that, I became an instructional designer for Penn State. Um, and now I'm the director of the Center for E-Learning Initiatives at Penn State Barron. So I oversee all of our online and hybrid learning initiatives at that uh, campus location in Erie. Um, and I'm also a PhD student at Old Oop, I think we may be, did we lose you, Jessica? I think we did. I can finish that last part for her because <laughs> I worked with her at uh, Old Dominion. Um, she's finishing up her PhD at Old Dominion, I think is what she was saying. <laughs> so Old Dominion University in Virginia. So thank you, Jessica. And again, drive safely. All right. So I think we have everybody except Eric's not here. Um, I'm, that's surprising. Maybe I hope he didn't get his signals crossed with um, the emails that were going out. But he, let's just jump right into it. So what I'd like to do tonight to start out with is to give you a sense of how I thought these five weeks would play out within the MOOC in terms of the topics to be covered. And then as we talk about the topics to be covered, if you have um, a, an affinity for any of the topics and you think that's something you'd like to sink your teeth into in terms of designing the instruction for that week, um, that's all right. That's the idea tonight is to divvy up the five weeks. And also, just to give you a sense of the way I think these weeks will work out, we also have to kind of think about who our audience is and, and how people will be approaching this, the service learners will be approaching this. Uh, we're pretty much assuming uh, a maximum of time on task or the time that people will devote to, to doing this. I would imagine it will be about two hours a week. Maybe three, we could get them to work on it for three, but I think we've all lurked enough or experienced enough MOOCs 
to know, you know, really pushing it if you, if you get beyond um, asking somebody to commit more than a couple hours. So really what we're asking you to do is to design a fairly small instructional experience for one week um, on one of the topics we're talking about. Um, so as you recall, the, the purpose of the, the MOOC is really a way to cast a very wide net to pretty much anybody who wants to sign up. There are no prerequisites for the class. So we're anticipating seeing a lot of adult basic educators, maybe some instructional designers who want to give back, some college students who want to gain some experience to add to their portfolio. Um, so we're guessing that's pretty much who would, will, will be the service learners that will join us. And so the idea is in these first five weeks is to really get to get them involved in this authentic task of designing an adult basic education module. And so um, my thought process, and uh, hopefully we can have a good discussion about this and come to consensus, is that we somehow need to get them the exposure to dissecting what this uh, instructional opportunity is all about. So this would be week one. So really spending some time getting them thinking about the instructional need. Why is adult basic education different than K-12 or higher ed or whatever it may be? What will this instructional context look like? Um, how could it be different than what maybe they're used to seeing? Um, who are these learners? Um, so in terms of like persona discovery and things like that. And as I'm talking about this topic, I had a great conversation this morning with actually a faculty member at Old Dominion um, that just was uh, started. His name is John Bakke, and he's actually done a lot of research, and he'd like to actually conduct research with us on this project on persona discovery. And so that's what the JB is on um, the screen here is for, for John Bakke. He's kind of carved out. He said he'd like to help us um, with that aspect. Um, then moving on to week two, um, the, the, the idea is let's pivot a little bit and get them thinking about what their initial design decisions need to be. And as, as we all know, when you're faced with a design opportunity or a design problem, you need to start sharpening your focus and thinking about what topics are we going to be covering, um, what's the scope of the lesson, and given we're aligning our instruction to the standards, we need to spend some time getting the um, service learners familiar with what the standards are, and how that will tie into their lesson. And then tying into what JR was saying before, um, there's a ton, a ton of OER out there. However, as we all know, there's different types of OER. There is no one <laughs> set definition for what it is. Some people, um, you figure if they're putting something free up on the internet, it's an open educational resource, but we take a, a, a little bit higher level um, and, and really look more to how the licensing is, how liberal the licensing is. So long story short, we need to have some type of um, topic covered on OER and how there's a world of OER out there and help them to, um, to understand the differences between OER repositories and, um, and to kind of hone in and target on the type of OER that they could potentially repurpose. Uh, moving on from that, then we need to have, again, this is going to be a lot of novice designers, and so we need to kind of cut to the chase and say, here are some best practices in terms of designing an instructional experience that's effective and efficient. Um, and so we'll kind of leave that for, right, for there for right now and move on um, to the, then the next uh, major thing is they need to then present to us what the representation of their design is. So after they've kind of gone through these, this process of understanding who the learner is, the context, understanding or establishing what the focus is that they want for their lesson, aligning it with the standards, potentially finding some OER from a K-12 environment or whatever it may be to repurpose, then they need to think about, okay, now what am I going to, what am I going to actually design? Um, and then that will be presented to us in some type of design, to be determined design proposal. And so week four, that a designer tackling that would um, work on coming up with some types of activities to help, to, to prompt the, the service learners to create their design proposal. And then the last week of the experience, I'd really love to figure out some way to prompt them to self-evaluate their design proposal before they turn it in. And I have some suggestions on that from what we've done in the past. So that basically in week four, they'd be drafting this design pr proposal and then spending week five going back and looking through, okay, are you hitting these marks? And then turning it in. And then as we talked about before, 
based on what whoever's sticking with us and has turned in a design proposal, we will then select from that group and, and move on to phase two. So we're going to set phase two off to the side for several weeks for right now and focus on, on, uh, on phase one. So with that said, <laughs> let me be quiet for a moment. And how does this sit with you, given what, what I've talked about before in terms of what we're trying to accomplish in this phase one? Does this seem, first of all, like important topics to cover? And second of all, in terms of the flow, how it goes from week one to week five. So I'd love to hear feedback and comments on that. Jump in. You're all designers. Please. Um, I, I'm just kind of wondering if, if you already have an idea around what the design proposal looks like. Uh, I'm just thinking about this going backwards. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of times what I've done in really short courses, like this uh, 10 to 20 hour format, is having, it's not really a learning journal, but it's scaffolded so that um, whatever that final assignment that the instructor wanted is actually then broken out into those smaller pieces. And so on day one, they've already completed that first part that ends up in the final proposal. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure what the design looks like well here's what we've done in the past and that's an excellent question so I, I don't know if you noticed I'm sorry I went pretty fast there I skipped to week four where that is and I, I've got each of the weeks kind of starting to break them down and so um, here's what we used we called it something different I think people get so freaked out over what you call these things like if you sometimes like if you call it a plan and people are like oh it's a proposal whatever <laughs> But we called it a plan, a design plan. So we actually had eight sections um, that we asked our, in the prior cohorts that we had, and starting with the purpose of the lesson, the audience description, course scope, um, major course objectives, and then getting into the learner engagement approaches, um, thinking about what the instructional media would be appropriate, um, and then getting kind of into the devil in the details a little bit in terms of course structure and sequencing, so how they're going to take the, the learners through the lesson. Um, so those were the eight sections we used before. And it was fine for our purposes then. You know, what was, what's always interesting is how different then and what a struggle it is for the students then to take it to that next level to create a prototype or a storyboard from a design plan. And they just realized pretty quickly how inadequate their design plan was. But that, I mean, you have to start somewhere, right? <laughs> you rarely can you just develop something that's perfect um, from the get-go. But I'm certainly open to suggestions. So how does this jive with, with what you've done in the past in terms of those eight sections, JR? I just lost them again. But I, I think that, that like we're looking at something that's really um, short. And I think those eight sections uh, at first glance look pretty good. Yeah, I just put the link in the chat room there for that. Uh, awesome. Oops, you, you, you know what? I'm sorry. I just sent it to Stacy privately. Sorry about that. There you go. That work. Okay. There you go. So, yeah. So that's that's a big to be determined. That That's a, a, a really um, – and then another thing, too, do, does it necessarily need to be a design proposal? Should we maybe – kind of push them toward thinking about a, a storyboard or a pr prototype, um, you know, kind of jump, jumping the proposal hurdle in general. Anybody have any thoughts on that? How about folks who've taught like an introductory, an, you know, introduction to design class? Like what do you usually have your students do for their first type of project? I, I can speak from my experience a bit. Um, so I taught a, a basic intro class and uh, design one and it's, we followed the, I, I, mine was very focused on Addy model and walking through each individual step and couching it in that particular context. So that's kind of where I've been in the past. Um, I don't know if that helps at all. Okay. And so it was kind of the same idea, like a written plan, like a written, you know, like a written pr proposal or plan versus like jumping right into doing any type of rapid prototyping or anything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it basically ended, uh, the implementation obviously didn't happen, but the, uh, it would end at a, a storyboard. So you were talking about storyboard versus mm -hmm. proposal. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So did anybody, let's go back to our, um, the, the five, five things, uh, five, five weeks. So, um, how about like kind of backtracking, like JR was saying, like kind of starting with what we hope, hope for the hope for them ultimately to be able to do. How do these sit with you in terms of the topics that they we would cover within each week? And may maybe it would be helpful to go through each one because I do have a little bit more 
information that I put on some of these. Uh, okay, let's see. There we go. We go Did you ahead. possibly share the the um, the link to the design plan? Oh, sure. Sorry, I think I just shared it privately with Stacy. I don't know how that happened. Sorry about that. There you oh, go. Thank you. Um, so week one, we talked about the need and things. Okay, here we go. So like now getting into that week two where they do their, think about the, their, the first design decisions. So defining their focus and the scope of instruction. Um, so spending time doing a deep dive into what the standards are. And again, these are things we'll have to talk about with subject matter experts. I think at this point, we're mainly focusing on the college and career readiness standards and the GED standards. Certainly there are other ones, but let's assume that those are the two main ones that we'll, um, we'll be focusing on. And, um, and so making that leap between, okay, I want to do a, a lesson on fractions and okay, if I go to the standards, this is what they're tested on. So that then becomes my objective for my lesson. And so starting to lay, basically this is laying out your objectives for the lesson. Um, and then kind of starting to turn the corner in terms of, okay, we're not necessarily reinventing the wheel on all of this stuff. So before I start to design my instruction, let's see what's out there. And so spending time looking at available open educational resources and understanding again what, what exactly an open educational resource is. So that's week two. Any questions on that or any thoughts as far as, is this where you would start out? So the designers getting to think about the lesson. Any suggestions on this? And I, I agree. I, I, this, this is kind of how I would start something. So they would get, they would figure out a topic, right? You would mm -hmm. give them a topic of some sort. And then I almost just set it up like a syllabus. Um, just from being from an educator's background, like we just kind of set it up as a syllabus and then kind of storyboard it out. Um, so I'm just trying to follow along. Everybody sets mm -hmm. things up differently. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, yeah, so this, this makes sense to me. Okay. And you know what? We do have some, this is really helpful too. We do need to think big picture um, what our lessons are going to look like after we've even fin finished phase two. And um, that's, these are some question prompts that we've got for the subject matter experts. And I think as designers, we need to come to con consensus. We've talked, I think Eric raised the question last week. We're really designing ultimately for the adult basic education educators, the instructors. So they'll have a lesson plan along with the lesson materials. And so I think that kind of gets to what you're saying, Stacey. I think when you said like a syllabus, is that also kind of thinking in terms of like a lesson plan? Exactly. Well? Okay. Yeah. And then what resources, you know, what are they going to, how are they going to present this material? How's it going to come across on screen? Is it, is it a lecture? Is it a, through a PowerPoint kind of thing? Like how are they is it a read? Like, what type of assets are they going to use to create the online lesson, I guess? Does that make sense? Right, right. And when you say they, you mean, like, the service learners, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep. So are you thinking about uh, providing them with some kind of structured template that guides them through that process, or? Yep. And that's what the other team's kind of working on uh, a okay. little bit more, the adult learning zone. Like, what is, what's the deliverable going to look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And we could talk about, I've got the uh, um, SME survey that um, I, I gave you guys the draft. And I'm, I'm going to try to get that out kind of quickly. Even though it's not perfect, we'll start getting a dialogue with them. Is And I think it sounds like, again, with you guys having such a, a deep background um, as educators yourself, I think you'll certainly be able to um, provide us a lot of guidance, too, in terms of how, how you think these things, the deliverables should look. Um, okay, so then moving on to um, to week three, this is really getting into the kind of the, the details of what the instructional experience will look like. And I personally found, you know, some people get, think, get a little weirded out because it's, it's from David Merrill, but I really, really like a particular article that he wrote and, and was published in etr &D. And it's, um, it's great for novice, in my opinion. It really helps novice designers understand that instruction is more than just presenting people with content and quizzing them. And he really draws on all types of learning theory and instructional theory to frame his uh, presentation of instructional phases, beginning with activation, moving on to demonstration, application, and integration. And then... I've kind of added my, if you look on this screen I have right here, the, the column on the left is, is really um, what, what 
Merrill was speaking to, the activation, demonstration, application, and um, integration. And then I've added learner to content interaction, learner to instructor interaction, and learner to learner interaction. So when I'm designing instruction, this is kind of my weird way of looking at filling in how things will be, be accomplished. So for example, um, like think of, let's think about the application phase when you really want them to practice what they're doing. They can clearly work alone on that, just have a deep learner to content interaction. It may be something they work one-to-one -one with a tutor on, which would then take you over to that learner to instructor com, com, um, column. Or in some uh, cases, you may have the ability for the peer-to-peer -peer -peer learner interaction. You may have them work on something in a group setting. And so what I really want um, uh, in our service learners to think about is how these, how, what, what, how, what the instructional transaction looks like and what, what you really are designing. And I think, unfortunately, this is usually very glossed over in most, when most, like, for example, when a subject matter expert may be designing their own instruction, they're more concerned with, let's just dump a whole bunch of content out at them, take them through a bunch of screens, and then quiz them at the end. And um, so I'm just very interested to hear how, how do you guys approach this when you're thinking about designing the instructional activities? Do you have like th certain things that you want to make sure that you include with your, uh, when you're designing instruction? I, I was just about to say, I wish I had this chart or I had noticed this chart about three days ago. Um, we, I've been working with a, a group mostly using Gagne's nine, but yeah. we're, we're chunking them together. So we're still doing like a set body conclusion sort of style. Um, but I, I really like the way these four are laid out um, against the uh, learner content, learner instructor, learner, learner uh, interactions. Yeah, I, you know, it's just intuitively really appealing. And, and as we all know, Meryl's, you know, a Gagne lover. So it's very Gagne-esque when you read it through. But what's really interesting about the, <laughs> if you read the PDF, he's really trying to build a bridge to constructivist, <laughs> you know, social cognitivist and whatever it may be. So, you know, it's, I would, I, I honestly, I use this when I evaluate instruction. I, I kind of uh -huh. try to see where people are hitting these um, kind of, to me, big milestones on the left, or if they are at all. And it, even when you read through, Merrill's thing, he, he, he basically says most people don't, they just skip right over activation, which is so critical to get to engage the learner. At first, you have to like reach them where they are. Um, so anyway, so to me, this is very intuitively appealing. I'm very open to other suggestions. If you have other ways that you help people design instructional strategies, um, but this is one that I find, you know, to be pretty effective. So anyway, do you want to, anybody want to talk more about this or should we you okay if we move on? Okay. Let's go on to week four. And so this gets into the questions that we had uh, the JR raised before as far as what the design proposal is going to look like. And then finally, now this is what I, I think this week could be kind of fun. So in every core cohort we've had up to this point, when the students turn in their design proposal, it goes through a round of formative evaluation. And I think we can do an abridged version of that by making it a self-evaluation -eva and potentially even given it's in a, an LMS, we could even have it where people give peer-to-peer. -peer. That may get very cumbersome with hundreds of people. I'm not sure if it would, be, it would happen. But if you click on where it says see sample, it will take you to, this is the, the survey that um, I put together for our prior cohorts. And um, it's basically, this was a peer-to-peer -peer evaluation. It also had the subject matter experts and also the client um, pr providing feedback. But it was just prompting you to look at those eight sections I mentioned and and assess to what extent are they hitting the mark. Is it acceptable the way that they presented it or it needs work? Um, and so I think this potentially could be morphed into a, a rubric that the students could use to self-evaluate the quality of their design proposal. But I think it'd be worthwhile to spend that last week to have them self-evaluate your proposal before you turn it in. So here's what, how we're going to be evaluating the quality of your proposal. And so why don't you take a crack, crack at it first to self-evaluate before you turn it in. So that concludes our five-week MOOC. <laughs> so does anybody have any preferences as we've gone through them on topics that really spoke to them that they'd like to sink their teeth into? Because my idea is I'm turning this week over to you to design. And, um, and certainly we'll have to all coordinate and collaborate to make sure things look the same and that we are speaking from a common voice. But, um, 
But in terms of the content that's provided, I really want to make that, pass that off to, to you. So with that said, let's start speaking on what, what, what speaks to you? What, what would you like to work on? So we're going to each take one of these weeks and create the materials that the service learner will then follow. Exactly. So to, to create. Okay. Oh, uh, gosh. I don't know which one. <laughs> They're all like, um, okay. We went through one and two. I feel like I need to look at all of them. And we can do that too. Like if you want to think about it now, I mean, we don't have to necessarily decide, decide tonight, but certainly if anybody has one that they'd like, you know, if we could start <laughs> divvying right. things up. And then um, to kind of get to what you're, uh, let's just talk a little bit about that, the idea of a schedule. So here's what I'm thinking for our group. Um, after tonight or in the next couple of days, if we could decide who wants to work on each week, I'd really like to give us a lot of time to gnaw on this. So we're going to have the opportunity to send out our survey to our subject matter experts, get their feedback. But I really would like to not really re regroup officially with this group. Certainly you guys can meet independently. Like if you want to compare, compare, compare notes and share and compare as a, as a team, you know, individuals working on your section. Um, but I really don't have, uh, I think it'd be great to let you guys just let this uh, marinate for a while and let you kind of think through your, your weeks to meet again on sometime during the week of October 12th and give you the opportunity then to pitch your design proposals for your week um, and then circle back again, be, you know, get a lot of feedback and have a discussion about it and then refine your design um, for, for the uh, week of November 9th and then get everything all tidied up and ready to upload into Canvas the, uh, the week of December 1st is what my thought process was. So back to our list. Does anybody have any preferences? One thought that kind of popped into my mind, the, the OER thing is a draw for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not, I don't have a, a ton of experience with aligning the less, like lessons to standards like the, the college and career readiness. Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody was willing to split week two with me in some capacity, and then I could also feed into whichever week that that person was working on, then, then I could uh, take a stab at scope, uh, focus of less and, and repurposing OER. Okay. Yeah, I think that's, that would be, that would be fine. I think that week is a pretty heady week. So that makes sense. Yeah. And then I, I think for me too, like what, what that might help me with is not uh, being so isolated as like kind of having one finger in, in one of the other weeks would just kind of help me uh, orient myself in terms of what other um, the the lens of other people are coming from as well. Sure, you know that brings up a good point. You know, I'm making the assumption given we're so spread out geographically, time zone, busy professionals. You know, I did make the kind of the conscious decision to make these individual assignments, but certainly, if that's you know, if you'd rather use this as an opportunity to partner up with somebody, that's fine too. Or, or take a different approach, like have three people work on week three or whatever. You know, that's, that's fine. Did anybody, like Stacy? did you have, I know you talked, you mentioned a few things about this aligning the lesson with standards. Is that something you'd be interested in, that section, or not so much? Actually, yes. Yes, that would be something. Um, that is something that, that I have done. Um, so, yeah, put me, put me in for that. I, I would do that with JR. Okay. Um, and JR, you wanted to do um, the first one too. Do you guys want to share that one? Or yeah, what? sure. Like yeah, I, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, I was just thinking in terms of like one in, one ID per week, and so those were the two within week two. I felt I felt comfortable with. So. Okay. Okay. All right, we got week two done. Yay! <laughs> oh, Felice is saying week three. Excellent. Okay. Could take week five. Now we're talking. All right. <laughs> okay. And um, we got Jessica and oh, Jan Jason's here. Hi, Jason. Jason's on our board, and he was the GSA AACT GSA president last year. I think he's turning over the reins, um, and so he was part of our cohort last year. And he's also on the board for Designers for Learning. Hi, Jason. Um, 
Okay, so you know what, we'll, we'll circle back with Jessica and I think we've got everybody except for Jessica and Eric. So we'll try to backfill week four and then I think we'll need some help on week one as well. Okay, um, so everybody feels pretty good about this and certainly raise your hand during the week if something, if, if, you, if you think of something or, or as you start working more specifically, as you start working on your unit, you're like, you know, I think this needs to go a different direction or whatever it may be. Um, Oh, there's Jessica. She's glad to do week four. All right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, Eric, I think you just got <laughs> process of elimination. We're giving uh, Eric these two. I'll work with him on those though. Okay. Very good. So uh, if you look on the um, design plan, we don't need to go through this in any detail, but I, I looked at it, uh, the, the design proposal, I'm sorry, not design proposal, but Canvas's proposal. And I thought it was going to be more involved, but I think I can go ahead and get the ball rolling on this. So I'm going to turn this in next week. So if you go toward the back um, of this design plan, there's the Canvas Network course proposal. And it's not a lot of detail. It, it mainly just gives a high level overview of um, what, we, what we plan to do. So I think I'm going to get the ball rolling with them. So if you want to take a peek at that over the next day or two and if you see anything that jumps out at me otherwise next week I'm, I'm going to go ahead and turn that in um, I don't think there's anything we need to spend a lot of time on right now it's it's all the stuff we've kind of talked about one thing we can think about um, is this whole idea of digital badging and cert providing a certificate up to this point on our cohorts what we do when people complete successfully complete it we give them a uh, a letter of recognition and that works really well they can put it in their portfolio or take it on a job interview or whatever it may be to kind of verify that yes I actually did this project and, and received acknowledgement from it um, however with working with a canvas network we certainly have the opportunity to think through badging and so let's all just kind of keep that in the back of our minds how we could maybe um, incorporate some some type of badge um, based on what they're they're accomplishing let's see Okay, back to our agenda. Where's our agenda? I'm losing my own agenda here. Okay, where'd it go? There we go. So the, the last thing that I really wanna talk about tonight is this um, the SME survey. And so if you click on the link that's there, it'll take you to what the draft document looks like. And what I'm trying to, to do here is to get feedback from our SMEs on the learner, what they think these deliverables need to look like that our service learners are going to do, work on. Um, and then also think about, are there areas in particular we should focus on in terms of topic areas? For example, we have English language arts, math, science, social studies. Um, so get, their, get a sense for which ones they think are most needed and then also at what grade level? Because unfortunately, as we all know, some folks are uh, struggling at uh, fairly low grade levels. And um, what we've done historically is focused on grade level E, the nine through 12, um, mainly concentrating on folks who are just about ready to take their GED. And so it'll be interesting to see based on their feedback if they think that's a good way to, you know, based on how they respond here, should we continue to focus on that higher level nine through 12? Um, or should we, you know, should we maybe look a little bit lower on some of these subject areas? So does anybody have any, I don't know if anybody had a chance to look at this um, in any level of detail, but would you guys be okay if you spent from now until Monday looking through this and then send out an email like to the group or to me, whatever, um, with some suggestions on questions you'd like to see added or maybe questions you'd like to see revised? Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And I think, honestly, that's all I have. <laughs> so I really didn't have a ton, except I really wanted to start, start the ball rolling on these design, uh, divvying up the design assignments. Hey, Jason. There's Jason's little guy. Hi, Caleb. You are so cute. Hi, Kai. Oh, I got a wave. <laughs> We've had so many babies. We've had like a baby boom at Designers for Learning. We've, Jason's son was born. Um, 
Jill's daughter was born. We have a um, Paige is pregnant, about ready to deliver. <laughs> so be careful, folks, if you're, if you're not interested in expanding your family, just letting you know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, is there any, does anybody have any questions or, um, are you Sorry, guys I, I just missed the, the deadline for the, uh, survey feedback. If we could, um, if you could touch base with me by Monday, that would be great. Yeah, for sure. And, um, yeah, add any questions or, or whatever that you, um, or amendments that you think the questions are oddly worded or whatever it may be. And are you guys okay with if you, if we start, oh, actually maybe we could try to do this. Is it, would it be possible to get on your calendar right now the week of October 12th? Are there any dates that um, look better than others for you at this point? Let me pull up the... Pull up the calendar. That would be great. If I could get a date right now, I'd be really happy. Does this time slot work for you guys? Wednesdays at um, six o'clock uh, central, seven o'clock Eastern. So that would be the 14th. I don't have a calendar in front of me. Well, should we tend to, how about if we tentatively say um, Wednesday the 14th at 6, and then I'll, I'll send out a thing, and, and if we'll see if anybody has any conflicts, but for right now, we'll, I'll send out a, um, what should I do? I'll set it up as a post, an event thing. Yeah, just let me know. Let's, let's, let's say that's the date. I'll send up, I'll put a post up on our, you know, our website. And if that turns out to be a conflict in the next couple of days, if you could check and let me know. Otherwise, let's let's plan on that. All right. Well, very good. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'm done. Uh, what, what was the um, what was the tentative time for that meeting again? Um, let's see. It, I get my time zones mixed up. So we started this at 6 p.m. Central. So that would be 7 p.m. Eastern. Is that okay? It's fine. Okay. October 14th at 6 o'clock p.m. Very good. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and please touch base, and talk to you soon. Okay, bye.